All right. Uh, the next presentation isn't on the agenda. It's called a cameo. And uh, it's It's going to be interesting. Uh, the presentation is going to be led off by Professor John Straub, who, despite coming from the University of Waterloo, has a sense of humor and is knowledgeable. <laughs> uh, so, Professor Straub, please take it away. Thank you, Joe. Um, so, the other guy on the stage is also a University of Waterloo grad. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so there's a fair number of us around here. Apologies, apologies. So, we're going to talk very briefly here about something that's cool and new from buildingscience.com. And believe it or not, it involves AI and BS. And uh, a lot of there's a lot of buzz around artificial intelligence and AI, and we're all going to lose our jobs, and we're going to have AI go out and inspect flashing details, etc. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, for a year or two, it's been of interest to me. All well, is there actually anything to this in the building industry? And if you go and look online about AI in buildings and architecture, you see there's a lot of websites. Uh, talking about AI, but most of it is about AI-powered design, and they will do things like, and you can, it's hard to find products because they just talk about what it could do and not many products. This company has a product, and you can also find uh, uh, videos that show how the product works. One of them, it, uh, you know, it actually lays out floor plans for residential buildings given site constraints and so on, and, and it can produce like 50 different floor plans for a residential building, uh, in only twice the time that an experienced architect can on a napkin. Um, and so, uh, but it's not on a napkin, right? So that means it's worth an awful lot more money because it was done on a computer screen, right? Um, the other thing is, is that when you get 50 AI-generated floor plans for your new multi-residential building generated by AI, about 30 of them are obviously stupid, uh, whereas when you have an architect, only maybe two of them are stupid. Um, and so there's a lot well, more wait, higher wait, proportion wait, wait. of success if wait you were to hire Wait a minute, be careful about architects, okay, jeez. <laughs> well, I think that's a pretty good ratio. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, so I had a colleague of mine in the School of Architecture who had a grad student investigating generative AI to generate images. And when you look at some of these drawings, your first look at that drawing is, that's a nice drawing. That's actually a pretty impressive drawing. Um, it's complete garbage. <laughs> Uh, and we'll dig into it a little bit. But it looks pretty good, much like that cat there is not actually a cat photo. That's generative AI. And a generative AI, or AI in general, and Bob's going to explain a bit more, it can actually reproduce things like cat pictures and roses and standard uh, high-rise skyscrapers, etc. But it, it, because they're standard and we know what they look like. Whereas when we start asking them to do a construction detail, of a parapet or a wood frame meeting a masonry parapet, you get uh, pretty much gibberish, uh, not just the language, that's fixable. We could fix the language on this model, but the drawing is just, it means nothing. Now that said, to a lot of people who have to worry, make drawings like this, clients would look at it and go, okay, that might be true, right? But anybody who builds anything would look and say, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and so they tried a lot of techniques to try and get the uh, AI models to try and be more helpful than it was to Brian Hubb's generated image um, and, 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 and basically you know, gave up and said, right now, it's just not ready for prime time. But there might be spots where AI could be useful, and you have to be very careful about where you deploy it to avoid getting ridiculous responses. So when it comes to building science, I, I in, in, uh, you know, introduce you to uh, Dr. Robert Bowerman, um, Waterloo grad, of course, as all good things come from Waterloo. Um, anyway, who's been working on in the tech industry for 25, 30 years, you're old. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and so he's going to do a quick intro into uh, AI and show how it's being deployed for buildingscience.com. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. it. 
I, I was warned, don't go after John or you're dead. But, you know, I think we came out okay here. So, hey, I'm Bob. Nice to see you all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very short one here and try and demystify what AI is. Because there's this whole industry that hypes it and makes it sound complicated because then they can charge money, right, in, the, in doing that. But it's honestly, you know, essentially AI, machine learning, it's just a type of modeling where you give the inputs and you give the outputs. And what it does is it calibrates the model so through uh, iteration, through optimization, and through a repeated process. So that given that set of inputs gets a set of outputs on there, right? Then this sort of goes beyond that into generative AI. And these are sort of the subset of uh, these models that produce new content. Audio, CAD images, or text, videos. You can do, do a whole bunch of things because, again, you give the inputs and you sort of show sample outputs and it goes and calibrates. Now, one specific type of this, which is very uh, big right now, obviously, or was what I called a large language model. So this is a model, they started a, well, 8 billion parameters is a small model. It doesn't do very well. And it goes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what you do is you train it. And they train it on basically all the language there is in the world. Every single piece of text. If you go and see OpenAI doing all these content partnerships, because they need language in order to train it, to show, you know, to predict the next word. Because the whole model, all these models, actually work on next word prediction. So you basically have a text, and then it goes and gets calculates the probabilities of the, of the next word out of a set. Then it chooses one of them. And you can adjust the temperature so that, you know, you want to be an accountant, you turn it down to zero. And if you want to be a, uh, in, in, interpreted, a poet, a uh, poet, be a poet. If you want to be a poet, they turn it up to two. It goes from zero to two. So seriously, I'm, I'm on there. And that, show, that shows the level of randomness. In, in there. And the problem when you set it to zero is it's very stilted and it says the same thing over and over again. And you turn it up to two and it's, it's just nonsense, like those pictures um, on there. But it's essentially, what you have to know is that on your smartphone, you have a very simple one that when you go and it sort of guesses the next word, that's all it is. And, uh, and you know, you make it big and complicated enough that it actually looks way more intelligent than it is. But the other one here is that it is excellent at producing text, but it doesn't know anything. It certainly doesn't know anything about building science. It has no domain expertise. So how do you address that? How can you do that? Well, one of the ones here, the sort of technique, is called retrieval augmented generation. And essentially, a RAG. And the guy who invented this like three years ago said, I wish I'd known it had been popular. I would have changed a used a different acronym. <laughs> But he, uh, it's a sort of technique, and how it does it is that sort of when it gets a question, when it gets something in there, it goes and searches a database using semantic searching so it looks at the meaning, sort of finds the relative passages, and then it goes and feeds that into the, 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 the language model and sort of says, answer this question using only this information, nothing else. And so then what it does is it goes, it goes okay, here's the information. Here's the word patterns, and then it goes and generates a response based on the word patterns, and it can do a pretty good job. And I'll we'll do a little demo in a bit. But it's a, it's a great way of bringing context and sort of domain understanding into a model. Now, then the final one is, well, why buildingscience.com? Well, one of the things there that these things, and John and I have done various experiments, um, is that it needs to be a well-curated and comprehensive set of uh, information to draw upon. If it's not well curated and it has contradictory and you know, mix of the good, the bad, and the ugly, well, that's what your model fits back, feeds back to you. If it's, uh, you know, but the buildingscience.com, it's a large set of high quality, objective building science information. At least that's what it says on their website. And, uh, <laughs> Watch it. I, I can't judge. I'm a, I'm a simple computer engineer. And, uh, you, you know, but it is, what, one of the things that is noticeable about it is it has a clear and consistent point of view and a certain tone and a certain, uh, you know, orientation to facts. 
And the other one here is that this is an absolutely terrific resource. And, and, and this is really an opportunity to extend its reach, to make it more accessible, to uh, sort of help, you know, assist in the mandate of the website, which was to improve the design and construction of buildings. And, and again, what this does is this goes through, searches through the database, and can give some uh, quite good answers on there. So with that, I had a, you know, wanted to keep it short, short and simple. But what I want to do here, and you know, when you're in the computer industry, the one thing they tell you never to do is a live demo. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do that. <laughs> so let me, uh, on a live demo on a new computer is perhaps the worst thing you can do. So anyhow, we're going to do it. So now, where is it? Well, we've actually, uh, you know, worked with Joe, Betsy, and the team. And we put it right, uh, right, the link is right I'm, on. I'm circling around it with my pointer here. Very so good. There's my digital pointer, not this digit, that the digital. And so I'm going to click on it, and then, uh, and then it'll send me off to, well, I think it'll send me off to, again, yeah. new computer. So this is, and, and what's key is what Bob was describing is that if you try this with ChatGPT, you will get highly dubious responses. And we know that because that's how we started this project Correct. a year ago or so, is that, oh my goodness, you wouldn't want anyone to rely on that. So this idea of calibrating it to what buildingscience.com says is that if you trust what buildingscience.com says, and whether you, know, you trust Stebrick or not, um, this will give you answers that are something like that. So I don't know, what were we were gonna say, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, we were thinking about what kind of a question we could ask. What is the difference between uh, uh, an air barrier and a, and a vapor barrier, which is a, a very common, uh, this is not my keyboard, is the, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Apparently I Okay, well just, just put Waterloo move. grad. <laughs> yeah, you need to, John only works on German keyboards, so. <laughs> Between air and. He did, sir. Vapor. No, no. Oh my goodness. Here, let me, let me, you, you dictate it you, 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 Air and a vapor barrier. You're, this may be closer to your keyboard than it is to It is, mine. I don't have a stand up desk, apparently. <laughs> How many engineers do <laughs> How much money do you have? <laughs> Somewhere around that amount. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's, it's pretty tolerant. Okay. And, and you can set the, how much detail you want. I think you've got it set on uh, average. Average. If you do the mobile site, you get brief, and it gives you a shorter answer. So I don't know. Uh, so you guys can judge, since most of you would know, you can judge whether that's a good answer or not. Uh, you know, uh, we've, what my role in this project is actually to be that person that judges how stupid the answers are. And a primary control about the temperature was to reduce the temperature and to improve the, uh, the actual uh, data set so that you got very few wrong answers. Sometimes you, you get, if you're very specific, you might not get a useful answer, but it rarely gives you a wrong answer. And, uh, and I, I don't think you ever get a stupid answer. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of been the design uh, model here, is to say, how do you get something that's most likely helpful, uh, maybe not a little bit not helpful, but not wrong? Yeah. Uh, and so then you can ask more questions. And what you see when you ask the question is not, not just the answer, it then also shows you where it got resources from. Correct. And so this is supposed to be a way of how do you use all of the resources on buildingscience.com, who wants to look through the 1,400 articles and reports, and so this then says, here's an answer, if that seems helpful to you, here are the reports or documents from which it came even to the point where if it comes out of a PDF, as you know many of them are, and some of them are like 100 page PDFs, it'll tell you it's page seven of the PDF, so click on page, that the link will say page seven of the PDF. So it's, um, it's not supposed to say this is the answer, it's supposed to say this is what's on buildingscience.com and here's how you can learn more about that. Uh, so that's how it's, again, it's in many ways people say it's a not ambitious project. It's not trying to make a sentient being that can <laughs> sit in the office of SOM and give them all. It's actually supposed to be more of a how do you learn stuff right. by using the buildingscience.com resources because it's such a huge one. 
Correct. And, and it also, and I think that's a key part, is you ask about a topic, it'll, it'll narrow right in into the area, and it'll sort of give you the references back, and it references both at the bottom and in the text. And then you can show that it also comes up with images, which is, again, something that's hard for most models to do. It'll actually give you relevant images, because so, we think in images in the building industry, and it'll generate other questions so that you can go down a complete rabbit hole and spend hours uh, asking more and more questions. Uh, sorry, sorry, and get more and more information. Yeah, uh, uh, okay, yeah. we have a question there. Yes, sir. So we would actually help you find out and really give you dumb information that's clearly, but do you have a resource on the page to say, this was exactly what I was looking for? Are you getting feedback that your thing is working for the people that are looking through it? Like, is there like, yes, success, or no, this wasn't what I was after? No, we, we, so that's, that's on the uh, 2.0 release. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm absolutely getting the uh, user world, feedback. It's okay, this is a world premiere. We and so we, yeah. it's, uh, it's live on Building there. Science right now, and so we're hoping that as people yeah. use it, and already in the last, whatever, 48 hours, yeah. there's already been tweaks. Like one thing you can do, we discovered people cared about, was how do I convert... Uh, CFM to liters per second. Yeah. Oh, well, that wasn't part of the AI. So, you know, Bob spent a few hours and now it can do stuff like that. Kill it. it can even do meters to inches. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Andy. Professor Stroud, do your graduate students find this useful? So, do the graduate students, I have tried this out with a bunch of people, not just graduate, also it's actually more interesting for undergraduate students, okay. uh, and I think that's actually more where it would be targeted for, because they have a, a little bit of a concept of some of the words, but they need to be filled out, and they don't even know where to start, and so you do a Google on air barriers and vapor barriers, and you get large Fortune 500 building product manufacturers calling their air barrier a water barrier. Right? It's like it's just crazy shit. And so this actually helps solve some of that so that they can they become smarter searchers, if you will. Yeah. And you will all become smarter if you use this. It's just <laughs> and more beautiful. <laughs> and I don't set the target too high. You remember um, uh, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So I, I think, uh, do you have a, a last sort of thing? Yeah, I, I did. I just hit the wrong button. Oh. Uh, oh, and also you can do all kinds of stuff like save the conversation. Uh, it'll do summaries of your conversation. So when you get down that rabbit hole and ask six questions, it'll give you a summary of all you've learned. Then you can email that off to your colleague to say, see, told you so. Uh, <laughs> something like that. So we understand that's how the design teams work as a cohesive group. And so... We built that into that process for architects to respond to engineers with T. Yeah. They need all the help we can give them. Yeah, you can, you can share it and you can save it for later and, and all these sorts of things. Now, I'm gonna, I want to finish off very, very quickly. And you can see summaries and all the related resources. But I'm going to finish it off because it's got many talents. And now I'm going to have to, to uh, write a limerick. Oops. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. Because of the large language model, it comes with stuff like it does Spanish. It, right? And, so, and I French. mean, that's just part of large language models. They can do that shit. You got, you, you got to call an audible. <laughs> there once was a man named Joe. In building science, he did grow. With tests and insights, he'd solve, solve all the plates, making buildings safe as we know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I think it'll do it in German too, uh, but uh, I haven't checked that. We know no, it works no. in Spanish. You can ask in German, but it answers in That's English. That's right. You ask in German, it answers in English, but you ask in Spanish, you get answers in Spanish. Um, so anyway, we're going we're gonna to tune a little bit of that. Yeah. So we don't want to steal too much from Foster's yeah. uh, time. I'm really, I don't want to get stuck on that, but... Uh, oh. <laughs> But I do think we have to let Foster yeah. have his. I mean, I'm going to follow that one like glue. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.